Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Measuring Distance Default with the FPC 1500. In this presentation, we'll show you how to make basic distance default measurements using the Vector Network Analyzer mode of a Rodian Schwartz FPC 1500 Spectrum Analyzer. This presentation covers the essential information needed to make basic distance default measurements with the FPC 1500. But please see the separate presentation, Understanding VNA's Distance Default Measurements, if you'd like more detailed information on this topic. Let's start with a brief overview. Distance default measurements provide the location of possible faults in a transmission line or cable. These can be due to cable breaks, bad connectors, corrosion, animal chews, etc. Signal reflections will occur wherever these faults are located. We can use a vector network analyzer to make distance default measurements. At a high level, this is done by injecting a signal into the cable under test, and then measuring the reflections in the frequency domain. An inverse fast Fourier transform, or IFFT, is then used to convert this frequency domain information into the time domain. These time domain results are then shown as a plot of amplitude versus distance from the measurement point. In some cases, the relative amplitude of the fault can also provide some indication as to the nature of the fault, or the cause of the reflection. There are six basic steps in making distance default measurements. Configuring the tracking generator, connecting the cable, setting the cable model and length, defining the measurement parameters, performing a one-port calibration, and viewing and or analyzing the results. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go through each of these step by step. Distance default measurements on the FPC 1500 are made in Vector Network Analyzer mode. To enter this mode, press the Mode Hard key on the front of the FPC, and then choose Vector Network Analyzer. Next, press the Measure Hard key, and choose Distance Default in order to start the distance default measurements. To configure the FPC's tracking generator, press the Measure Hard key, and then Source. For distance default measurements, we want Tracking Generator mode in which the output of the generator is a CW signal whose frequency is coupled to the measurement frequency. That is, the source output frequency sweeps at the same rate as the measurement. The output power of the generator is also configurable in units of dBm using the level key, with the maximum output power being 0 dBm. Care should be taken not to set the tracking generator level too low if measuring cables with significant attenuation as this can lead to inaccurate results. For distance default measurements, the far end of the cable under test must be terminated into a well-matched, or roughly 50 ohm load. This load may be a CAL standard, a dummy load, or an antenna that's resonant at the measurement frequency. Erroneous distance default measurements are often caused by a failure to terminate the far end of the cable. The near end of the cable can be connected directly to the FPC's Gen Out port, or the cable can be connected using a short, high-quality DUT, or device under test cable. There are several cases when using a DUT cable may be helpful. One is when the near end of the cable under test is difficult to access. Another reason is that using a DUT cable helps to avoid strain on, or damage to, the analyzer connector. As we'll see in a few minutes, the effect of this DUT cable can be removed as part of the calibration process. The next step is specifying a cable model. Coaxial cables with different conductor spacings and different dielectrics will propagate signals at different speeds. This is called the velocity factor of a cable. They will also have different amounts of attenuation, which is often a function of frequency. Therefore, Accurate distance default measurements require the specification of a cable model, which describes both the velocity factor and the frequency-specific loss of the cable under test. The FPC 1500 comes preloaded with models for about 100 of the most common cable types. These can be chosen using DTF config, select cable model, and then pressing load. The selected cable model is displayed at the top of the distance default results screen. It's also possible to create custom or user-defined cable models. This can be done directly on the FPC itself, or it can be created on a PC using the free Instrument View software. 
To create a model on the FBC, press DTF config and then define user model. There are three configuration parameters. Recall that velocity factor describes the speed of propagation in the cable, which is specified as a fraction of the speed of light. Typical values are around either 66% or less often 82%. This value is independent of frequency. The cable loss or attenuation is specified as paired values of frequency and attenuation, that is, NDB at X hertz. The FPC will interpolate between the entered values. When done, press User Model to apply settings. The result display will also show that a user cable model has been applied. In addition to the cable model, the approximate length of cable must also be entered. This is done using the Frequency Hard key, and then Start Distance and Stop Distance. The main reason why cable length must be specified is that length is used to determine the measurement span or frequency range. The longer the cable, the smaller the measurement span. We'll look at this in more detail on the next slide. The other reason why cable length must be entered is that it's used to determine the display limits on the results. If the length is set too short, then we won't be able to see any cable faults beyond this distance. Setting the length too long is also undesirable, since any results past the end distance would not be reliable. In most DTF measurement applications, the approximate cable length is known, but if the length has to be estimated, it's usually best to overestimate. The next configuration step is defining span and center frequency. Most modern DTF analyzers use a method called frequency domain reflectometry, which sweeps the input or stimulus signal over a frequency range. This range is referred to as the span, and this span is centered around a center frequency. Unlike using a spectrum analyzer, the recommended procedure in DTF is to first set the span, and then to set the center frequency. On the FPC 1500, pressing the span hard key and then selecting auto span will cause the instrument to automatically calculate the optimal span for obtaining the best length resolution. Span can, however, also be manually set using manual span, although keep in mind that the maximum cable distance entered by the user will limit the maximum configurable span. Once the span has been set, press the frequency hard key and then use center frequency to set the center of the span. There are a few additional parameters that can be configured. The sweep hard key brings up two important settings. The first is the number of measurement or trace points. More points provides greater detail, especially over wide frequency ranges. The other sweep related parameter is toggling between the default continuous sweep and single sweep. An additional useful parameter is resolution bandwidth which can be set manually using the bandwidth hard key and RBW manual. A smaller resolution bandwidth will decrease noise, but will also increase measurement time. And finally, the reference level and vertical scale can be configured by pressing the amplitude hard key and then adjusting the related parameters. Note that automatic scaling is also supported. After configuring parameters, the next step is to perform a one port calibration. This process involves sequentially attaching an open, a short, and a match, or load, to the location where the cable under test will be connected. These standards can be in the form of discrete standards, or they may be combined into a calibration T. In addition to these manually attached standards, electronic calibration units can also be used. These units switch their internal standards in and out automatically, and are controlled by the FPC. Regardless of which type of standards are used, the process is started by pressing the Measure Hard key, pressing Calibrate, one port selective span, and selecting the calibration kit. Then simply follow the prompts to run the calibration process. If the cable under test will be directly connected to the FPC, then the calibration standards or calibration unit should also be connected directly to the port on the FPC. If, on the other hand, a DUT cable is used between the FBC and the cable under test, then the calibration standards are connected to the end of the DUT cable, since this is where the cable under test will be attached. Note that connecting the calibration standard to this point will remove the effect of the DUT cable from the final measurement. 
After disconnecting the calibration standards, or unit, and attaching the cable under test, the distance default measurement will run automatically. Here we see a typical result showing two potential faults in the cable. The start and stop distances are shown along the bottom of the screen, as are the center frequency and span. Distance default measurements can also be displayed in either numeric or tabular form. This is done under DTF config. First, use DTF threshold to define the minimum level in dB that should be considered a fault. In this case, we've chosen minus 45 dB, and this threshold is shown on the display as a blue horizontal line. If DTF list is then selected, a table showing peak number, distance, and return loss is displayed. Here we see two peaks, one at 5.85 meters, with a return loss of about minus 41 dB, and the second at 15.63 meters, with a return loss of 24.7 dB. Markers are enabled using the marker hard key and can be used to numerically quantify DTF faults or events. Up to six markers can be placed on a trace, and these can be either absolute markers or delta markers, which show the difference between marker values. You can toggle between types by using marker type. Another marker hard key is used to access functions for automatically placing markers on the peak or minimum values of the displayed trace. Let's end with a brief summary. The Vector Network Analyzer mode on Rodin Schwartz FPC 1500 Spectrum Analyzers can be used to make distance default measurements, which provide the distance defaults on an attached cable. These faults are typically defined as a return loss less than a user specified value. In order to perform a distance default measurement, the user must specify a cable model or type of cable, as well as the length of the cable. In addition, the span and center frequency of the measurement must be given, although span can be determined automatically by the FPC. When making distance default measurements, it's important to remember that the far end of the cable must be terminated into a well-matched load or antenna. Accurate DTF measurements also require a valid one-port calibration. Measurement results are usually displayed in the form of a graph showing return loss as a function of distance although faults can also be shown in table format. And finally, markers can be used on the trace results to obtain more precise numeric values. This concludes our presentation, Measuring Distance Default with the FPC 1500. If you'd like more information about network measurements, distance default measurements, or spectrum and network analyzers from Rodi and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.